We've now seen how a class can implement multiple interfaces, as in the example of our basic info provider. Let's now take a look at how a class can inherit from another existing class and override methods and properties on that base class. To start, let's create a new file called fancy info provider. Within this file, we're going to create a new class called fancy info provider. We then want this class to extend the basic info provider that we already defined. So we can do that by adding a colon and then typing the name of the class that we want to inherit from, in this case, basic info provider. Now, as soon as I do this, you might notice that we have a red squiggly line here indicating an error. The error says this type is final, so it cannot be inherited from. This is a characteristic of classes in Kotlin. By default in Kotlin, classes are closed, meaning they cannot be inherited from or extended. To extend this basic info provider class, we need to add the open keyword. By adding the open keyword, it now means that you can inherit from this class. So if we go back to our fancy info provider, we'll now see that our error has gone away and we can now override methods and properties in this class. Now let's start by overriding the provider info property. So we'll add the opening closed curly braces to our class definition. And then I can start typing provider info. You'll see that the IDE is suggesting the property available to us to override. So I'll hit enter and that will go ahead and auto-complete the property. Now notice it has the override modifier indicating that this property is being overridden. And now you'll notice that it automatically provides a custom getter. And you'll see that it defaults to deferring to the super implementation of this. So we could actually override this just like this by saying fancy info provider. If we were to then come back to our main function here and replace this with an instance of fancy info provider, and we rerun this, we'll now see that it is printing out fancy info provider. So that provider info is being correctly overridden in our new extended class. Now let's try overriding the print info implementation in our fancy info provider class. So if I start typing print info, once again, we'll see the IDE suggesting the method that can be overridden. I'll hit enter. And again, by default, this will call through to the super implementation of print info within basic info provider. And so I could then add another line here that just maybe says something like fancy info. And if I come back and run my main function, and now we'll see the base implementation, the basic info provider implementation, and now this extra line added by our implementation of fancy info provider. Now I wanna illustrate one last point in regards to inheritance, but before we do, let's refactor basic info provider a little bit. Instead of hard coding the session ID here, let's add a property to hold that value. So we'll come here and we'll say val, and we'll say session ID prefix, let's say, equals session. And now we will return session ID prefix right here in our implementation of get session ID. So now if I come into fancy info provider, I want to override that new session info prefix. So to do that, I might start typing session, and you'll notice that it's not auto-suggesting that new property that we just added. This is because to override a property in a derived class, 
you have to mark that property as open. This is just like extending a class. So we can come here to session ID prefix and add the open modifier. As soon as we do that, if we start typing once again, now we'll see it's suggesting the option to override session ID prefix. So just like the provider info property, I can now override this and I could say fancy session. So this is just one other way in which Kotlin works to enforce immutability. It forces you to mark both your classes, your properties, and your methods as being explicitly open for extension. Now there's a small problem with this new session ID prefix that we've added. It's really meant to be an implementation detail of the class. However, if we come here to our call site where we're using a fancy info provider variable, you might notice that we can actually access that prefix directly. This isn't ideal because like I said, it's an implementation detail. Our API shouldn't really be exposing that property. Now, the reason it's available is because we have defined it as a public property. So what can we do about this? Well, if we want it to be available in our child classes, but not to the public API, we could add the protected modifier. So now that that property is protected, down here when we try to access it, we get an error saying cannot access session ID prefix. And if we come back to fancy info provider, you'll see that we can still override that property without any trouble.